Pope Francis will be in Portugal for World Youth Day from August 2nd to August 6th. Join us this Wednesday, August 2nd, as he arrives for the welcome ceremony at the airport at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, then for the meeting with the President at 10.35 a.m. Eastern, 7.35 a.m. Pacific, later for the meeting with civil authorities at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and finally for Vespers with bishops, priests, and deacons, live at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, on Salt and Light TV. Hello and welcome to our continued coverage of the 141st Supreme Convention of the Knights of Columbus live from Orlando, Florida, here with Salt and Light Media. I'm Deacon Pedro Guevara Man, and uh, again, Julian Paparella. It's good to have you back. Great We're in day here. two. Day two already. Day two already. Yesterday was a very, very busy day. Today we begin the day with our coverage with just mass. Um, today's Mass will be the votive Mass of Blessed Michael McGivney, the founder of the Knights of Columbus. And the Mass will be presided over by Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, who is the Archbishop of Galveston, Houston. So uh, just a brief word for our French viewers as we prepare ourselves to go to our Holy Eucharist this morning. Alors, bienvenue à tous nos téléspectatrices, téléspectateurs en langue française. Nous sommes ici à Orlando, très heureux de vous présenter notre couverture spéciale de ce 141e Congrès suprême des Chevaliers de Colomb. Aujourd'hui, une messe tout à fait spéciale, c'est la messe votive du bienheureux Michael McGivney, le fondateur des Chevaliers de Colomb. Alors, belle messe à tous. Let's now prepare ourselves to celebrate this morning's Eucharistic celebration.
of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, yesterday we began this convention, solemn liturgy, a beautiful day of meetings and Last night, a great dinner and an incredibly eloquent address by Mother Agnes. Today, there is something astonishing happening at this liturgy. The Mass is celebrated in honor of one who was among us, the founder of our Knights of Columbus, and who now we can invoke as part of the history of saints. Is there anything so astonishing? one of our own, we can address in prayer today and say, yes, your intercession takes us to the Father with Jesus Christ, our mediator. And so today we do a votive mass uh, in honor of our founder, Michael McGivney. I ask you also to remember as an intention for this liturgy, Joan Kimmel, the sister of Archbishop Rolio, who died yesterday. All these prayers and intentions go to the Father through Jesus, and always accompanied by the chief mystagogue in the church, the Virgin Mary. So, sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of eternal mercy, who set your priest, blessed Michael, in the church to comfort the suffering and the weary, the lonely and the oppressed with works of charity and a gentle heart, grant that through his intercession, we too may become vessels of mercy in our day and so enter into our heavenly inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature to manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is a kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, faith, fraternity, family, and friendship, they bring us together for this 141st Supreme Convention of the Knights of Columbus under the theme, First in Faith and Charity. As we gather, let us take a moment, a brief moment, to remember in prayer Another gathering of Catholics taking place at this time. I refer to the World Day of Youth in Portugal. May that gathering of Catholic youth from around the world, graced by the presence of Pope Francis, yield much benefit, much good fruit in the lives of the thousands of young pilgrims who have gathered in faith. Today, we celebrate the votive mass of blessed Michael McGivney. As we do so, we have proclaimed for us some words from sacred scripture. Firstly, we hear from the letter to the, to the Ephesians. The letter as a whole is a profound statement about the church. The passage before us is an urgent call for unity in the church. The faithful are instructed to strive to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And then the letter goes on to name the so-called seven unities, namely one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all. This unity, which is urged, is a unity of belief. But not only that, it is to be demonstrated, it is to be made real in the lives of individuals who by their acts of service show the community to be like Christ. You could say then that this unity is charity in action it is charity fully alive. 
Our gospel today is very well known to us. It's the Beatitudes. They form a part of the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount. And that discourse of the Gospel of Matthew is three chapters long. And it contains some of the most well-known teachings of Jesus. For example, it's there that we find the Lord's Prayer. There too we find the Golden Rule. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. The Beatitudes, which stand as the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount, teach us the appropriate attitude and disposition we must assume if we are to show the face of Christ to each other and to our world. These words from Ephesians and Matthew are placed before us as we celebrate this votive mass of blessed Michael McGivney. For the Michael McGivney, as you know, founded the Knights of Columbus at his parish in New Haven, Connecticut in 1882. My brothers and sisters, one of the remarkable resources of our church is a spiritual treasury of excellent examples. And this spiritual treasury is made up of women and men, ancient and modern, of every time and of every culture. They teach us by the example of their very lives how to live the unity of which Ephesians speaks. They show us the Beatitudes in real time. They lead us along the path of service which makes the church more like Christ and reveals the face of Christ to our world. Blessed Michael McGivney is now numbered among this treasury of excellent examples. He died at the young age of 38 in 1890. His cause for canonization was opened in the late 1990s. In a letter to the Supreme Convention of 2002, Pope St. John Paul II said this, This yearly assembly enables the Supreme Council to commit your order ever anew to the noble ideals of fraternity and service of the Church laid down by your founder. At the conclusion of this letter, John Paul returns to the vision of Blessed Michael McGivney. And this is what he says. In full fidelity to the vision of Father Michael McGivney, the Knights of Columbus will make every effort to draw young people to Jesus Christ and help them to understand that the true meaning and value of life is found in the generous gift of self to God and others. In this way, a new generation will discover at the heart of the church the spiritual resources necessary for building a society marked by authentic freedom, respect for the demands of truth, and selfless concern for the good of all, especially the poor and the underprivileged. In 2003, in addressing the leadership of the Knights of Columbus, John Paul again made reference to Blessed Michael McGivney. He said, in fidelity to the vision of Father Michael McGivney, may you continue to seek new ways of being leaven of the gospel in the world and a spiritual force for the renewal of the church in holiness, unity, and truth. In a homily at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York in 2008, Pope Benedict XVI praised the vision and the zeal of Venerable Michael McGivney, which led to the establishment of the Knights of Columbus. And then, in his apostolic letter declaring Michael McGivney blessed, Pope Francis noted that his zeal for the proclamation of the gospel and generous concern for the needs of his brothers and sisters made him an outstanding witness of Christian solidarity and fraternal assistance. The beatification took place on October 31st, 2020, 
at the Cathedral of St. Joseph's, Hartford, Connecticut. The following day, at his general audience in St. Peter's Square in Rome, Pope Francis made mention of the beatification of Michael McGivney. He described the newly blessed in these words. Dedicated to evangelization, he did everything possible to provide for the needs of the needy, promoting mutual aid. May his example be an impetus for us to witness evermore to the gospel of charity. As we celebrate this votive mass of blessed Michael McGivney, we pray for the advance of his cause to canonization. At the same time, we look to his life for example and for inspiration. As we do so, there are two things that suggest themselves to us for continued focus, commitment, and engagement. Firstly, Blessed Michael McGivney was the son of migrants. He was deeply concerned about the faith of migrants, migrant Catholics. He was particularly concerned about those leaving the faith. His vision and his example are an invitation to us today. There are studies which indicate that a significant number of Catholics leave the faith before the age of 18. There are studies which indicate that significant numbers of Catholics do not hold to the official teaching on the real presence in the Eucharist. The bishops of this country have responded with a national Eucharistic revival, which we heard of firsthand at the Supreme Convention in Nashville last August. Still, fidelity to the vision and example of Blessed Michael McGivney may be calling the Knights to deeper engagement here. The core initiative is vital here. It deserves wide support. Secondly, as a son of immigrants, Blessed Michael McGivney had deep concern for immigrants, especially immigrant families. The issue of migration today is global and it is daunting. Millions and millions of persons are moving from their country of origin, fleeing repression, persecution, and desperate situations. They are seeking a better way of life for themselves and their families. There is hardly a nation in our region of the world which is not affected by this movement of peoples in one way or another. The Holy See is very invested in the global reality of human migration. In its pastoral orientation on intercultural migrant ministry, we find these words. The Catholic Church is called to see the presence of many migrants and refugees as a providential opportunity to fulfill her evangelizing mission through witness and charity. The charitable work of the Knights of Columbus is measured in tens of millions of man hours. And this is separate and apart from the total amount of funds donated to charity by the Knights. That is a remarkable feat by any measure. It is reason to speak of being first in faith and charity. Is fidelity to the vision an example of blessed Michael McGivney calling the order to an even deeper engagement in the challenge of migration, both at home and abroad. The effort of the Knights to oppose human trafficking is definitely praiseworthy here. Could the next miracle in the process toward canonization of blessed Michael McGivney be found in a migrant family being ministered to by the Knights of Columbus? Fidelity to the vision and example of the founder will make each Knight of Columbus a missionary disciple, preserving the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace and making the Beatitudes our common attitudes. Thus, we reveal the face of Christ to our world, and Jesus Christ will be alive among us. Continuing the service, 
rooted in faith and charity, faithful to the vision and example of our founder, we pray humbly and sincerely. Blessed Michael McGivney, pray for us. Our first reading today from the letter to the Ephesians is a prison letter. And yet there's not one note of self-pity in the entire letter. St. Paul thus invites us, we who have been freed in Christ Jesus and who bear within us in faith and charity and charism of blessed Michael, Father Michael, let us now entrust our prayers, as Paul always did, to our exaltant God's heavenly Father. Pour notre Saint Père et pour tous les évêques et les prêtres, que Dieu les fortifie, tandis qu'ils continuent à conduire l'Église dans la sainteté et la vérité. Upang maging santo si Beato Michael McGivney at upang maraming mga kabataan ang tumugon sa tawag sa pagpapari at pagkarelihiyoso. Oremos a Dominum, Terodobus Módlmy się za świeckich, aby nasze wierne świadectwo o pięknie i godności życia ludzkiego, małżeństwa i rodziny przyniosło światu kulturę życia. Por todas las comunidades indígenas i primeras naciones de América para que nuestra constante solidaridad conduzca a una reconciliación significativa y a una mayor apreciación de su rica historia, cultura y fe. Oremos a Dominum, te rogamos a Dios. Sege pangarul uye kido habsida, tupere, Ukraina, Deanmingok, 중동의 평화를 위해 기도합니다. 우리 콜럼버스 기사단이 믿음과 자선을 통해 계속해서 전 세계에 사랑을 실천하게 하소서. Oremos a Dominum, Look, O Lord, on the prayers of your family and grant them the assistance they humbly implore so that, strengthened by the help they need, they may persevere in confessing your name. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Michael, so that as you brought him glory, you may through these sacred mysteries grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mystery may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, <coughs> but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the memorial of blessed Michael, that we may pers preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Grateful thanks to uh, Archbishop Pinder, who from Nassau in the Bahamas has come here at the convention and, and preached the word of God to us in, in, in this Eucharist today. Thanks to all those who've helped prepare the liturgy. Special thanks to uh, our, our servers, the deacons on either side, uh, our MCs who keep us from falling apart. It's all just wonderful. These liturgies are very beautiful. And in addition to thanking all who on celebrated today, Cardinal Harvey through archbishops and bishops, uh, also always uh, love to offer a special word of thanks to the, the, the choir, to the musicians who sing God's praises, help us sing God's praises, and then on their own, help interpret the beauty of music through Mozart or through Durifle and the beautiful song and liturgy they help us experience each time we celebrate here the Knights of Columbus. To all of you, may it be a blessed day. The Lord be with you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
we're now at the conclusion of Mass, and that actually is also the conclusion of our coverage uh, for today for the 141st Supreme Convention of the Knights of Columbus, live from Orlando, Florida. Tomorrow. Très belle yes. messe, euh, toujours des chants très majestueux, une belle célébration de la foi ici ce matin à Orlando en Floride. Et rendez-vous demain matin pour la dernière journée de ce congrès suprême des chevaliers de Colomb. On aura une messe très spéciale pour prier pour les défunts. Et alors yes. on demande l'intercession du bienheureux Michael McGivney pour vous tous à la maison. Restez branchés à Celle et Lumière pour notre couverture qui continue de ce 141e Congrès suprême des Chevaliers de Colomb, ici même à Orlando, en Floride. Yes, be sure to join us back, come back tomorrow for uh, our final day. We will uh, bring you coverage of tomorrow's Mass, the Memorial Mass, at 8 a.m. Eastern, here at the 141st Supreme Convention of the Knights of Columbus, live from Orlando, Florida. If you missed any of our coverage uh, over the last couple days, uh, be sure to check out our website, slmedia.org slash K of C. I'm Deacon Pedro Guevara Man, here with Julian Paparella. See you tomorrow. A demain.